Tonight, I want to preach out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if we could turn to that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 through 11. And I, I don't, I, I'm really not feeling to, to be very exuberant tonight or, but I am going to preach. Amen? Because I want to get a point across tonight. And I, I believe that message that Brother Axtell preached on Thursday night, if you did not hear that message on Thursday night, you need to hear it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be posted on our YouTube channel. Um, and thank you, Brother Price, for doing all that. And you need to hear that message. Because I believe it's time for us to take on the identity of Jesus Christ and understand our apostolic authority that we have when we're baptized in Jesus' name and filled with His Spirit. And living a holy and overcoming life. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses 9 through 11. It says, for I, and this is Paul speaking right here. For I am the least of the apostles. That's humility right there. And he's going to tell you why he feels this way. That am not me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. I want you to turn to somebody and tell them, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Come on, turn to somebody else and say, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Tonight, I am going to preach a message it's time to get out of the bubble wrap and you're going to understand where I'm going by the time I get to the end where but I believe that it's time for the apostolics of this time to get out of the bubble wrap. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Price if he could pray over the remainder of the service, please. Amen. You may be seated tonight. We live in a culture where we are trying to be like everybody else. 
following every trend that comes our way, even in the apostolic ranks that we live in right now we have people that are following trends and and sadly a lot of these trends are, are coming from hollywood and 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 it is it is corrupting the minds of our young people uh, hey man you look at the kind of clothes they wear uh, when i was younger you, uh, you had to worry about the pants being too big on a boy and now you have to worry about the pants being too tight on a boy hey man we 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 live in a in 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 a sick minded culture right now in this day and 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 it is a trends that are trying to seep into the church trends that are trying to guide the lives of our young people and trends that are trying to guide the lives of husbands and wives by painting false pictures of what marriages should be and amen false pictures of what church should be like what hollywood is pushing out movies of what church needs to be like but hollywood will never be able to copy what church is supposed to be like. Hollywood will never be able to copy what the Spirit of God is and and, and can be in your life if you will let Him. Hollywood will never be able to imitate a good anointing on your life. Hollywood will never be able to imitate Amen. a good cleansing in your spirit. Hollywood will never be able to imitate what it's like for a husband and a wife to love one another or a son and a daughter Amen. To, amen. Get along. But Hollywood has corrupted the minds of our young people and the parents of this society. We have to understand that God, amen, did not call us to be like the world. We should not mold our services according, amen, to how it might attract the world. But I'm still believing in this day in 2017, I still believe that a good old-fashioned move of the Holy Ghost is going to draw a lost sinner off of the street, out of a drug house, out of a whorehouse. I still believe a good old-fashioned move of the Holy Ghost It's still what it takes, amen, to save the lost. We're living in a time right now where our young people are being pressured to look a certain way. I see some of the wildest haircuts now. Oh, don't he look cute? No, you look... He don't look cute. He looks feminine. Well, don't my little girl look cute? No, looks more like a man that way. I believe in this time, in this apostolic faith that we believe. Amen. It's not, it's not meant for us to conform to this world. Amen. Romans. Amen. The book of Romans chapter 12 reminds us, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and holy and perfect. Amen. Somebody's got to be able to stand up in these last days. Amen. And project what Jesus Christ really needs to be. Amen. No matter and despite how the world tries to influence the church we must always rise up with a holy anointing not a better than attitude but with a holy anointing on our life pastor it's 2017 do you know they probably told Paul that well brother Paul it's such and such year Have you ever thought about that? That Paul too was standing up in times where the where churches were being challenged and 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 worldliness was seeping into the church come on it was just it wasn't very many years later when Paul was having to pin books to churches uh, pin letters to churches to get them him to adhere him in and stay on the course uh, that the original apostles uh, amen the message as he preached uh, whom they learned uh, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it was just a couple years after that to where the church has already started to sway away. We live in a time right now, if we don't fit the mold, we are rejected and we're pushed aside. And why do you think people are taking their lives today? Because they don't feel like they fit into society. We put our attention to the world. 
And we forget to look into the church. When the church, unfortunately, has let in the same types of attitudes and types of, of lifestyles we've adapted to it we've uh, hey man just like a frog you don't put a frog in in uh, in boiling water all at once you put him in cool water and turn the uh, water, uh, the uh, burner on and pretty soon that frog don't know it but he's being cooked to eat And that's the way the enemy, uh, the enemy's not going to come to your door and have a big old poster. uh, Look, I'm going to make you do this. No, it's going to start off slow. It's going to start off. Well, you know what? That's okay. Hey, man, pastor, I I know he believes that way. And the Bible does say this. That is the word of God. But, you know, it's 2017 and I don't need, you know, I don't need to praise God as much as he's asking me to. I don't need to read my Bible as much as he's asking me to. I don't need to pray, amen, that the authority of God will be on my life as much as he's asking me to. I got my job. I got my education. I got my business. Amen. I got my funds that I'm taking care of. Amen. When I have time, amen, then I will do it. We live in a time right now where where a, a, a church has seeped into the church, and if you don't have the gift of gab, well, you may not be a preacher. Oh, if you don't have the right singing voice, God can't use you in the choir. We're forming the same parameters that the world is putting out there if you don't meet this criteria you can't be this and what happens to individuals who are getting told they can't do this and they can't do that? Hey Amen. That's why here at Apostolic Lighthouse, I'm trying to get people. Hey Amen. I know Brother Josh has a calling on his life. And the only way, hey Amen, you know, I'd say, well, he don't have the gift of gab. No, he don't have the gift of gab. But the anointing falls on him when he begins to speak. And I know that one day he's going to preach a message that's going to shake your soul. It's going to bring you to the altar because it's not the vessel. It's a message going through the vessel. I'm trying to wake somebody up. And then God wants the church to rise up in these last days. You may not be the best singer, but it don't mean you can't sing for Jesus. When has everything got to be so professional? I'm preaching to the church tonight. I don't know how the anointing works. But all I know is God called me to preach. And I was a stuttering, stumbling, little red-headed boy that couldn't say five words in front of a, a group of people. And I stumbled through my first seven or eight messages. And I began to question the calling on my life. And I began to say, God, I'm I'm trying my best. And God told me, he said, you know what? That's why you're failing. And then you need to let me work through you. And you stop trying to control everything. And brother Antonio, I don't know how it happened. But one day I pushed the notes back. And that's why I don't preach Amen. off my notes a whole lot. Because one day when I pushed the notes back I started relying on somebody that was telling me something I couldn't think about in my own intellect and then I begin to and then say words that I never even studied about yes. and I believe that this church is going to rise and be the apostolic church it's time to get out of the bubble wrap we have people that walk into churches And they're afraid to do something for God. Because they're afraid of somebody saying something about them. Maybe they don't have the best voice. So they keep their hands down. Maybe they don't look like somebody else when they're shouting. So their feet, amen, is bound with bubble wrap. They're afraid. They put bubble wrap around them because they're afraid of getting hurt by somebody. They're afraid of somebody saying something to them because they don't fit the criteria. 
And we have Christians today sitting on the pew with bubble wrap wrapped around them. And people are walking up to him. Oh, I like to poke at him. Hey, man, he always gets that weird little look on his face when I say stuff to him. And this weird little noise happens. Hey, man, but you know what? He'll never be used of God. We like him in the church, but he'll never be used of God. And the mentality of Christians saying, you know what, maybe God just called you to a pew. And so we have put up safeguards so we don't get hurt. So that nobody will hurt us if I don't talk to anybody. If I don't tell them what's going on in my life, then I won't get hurt. If I don't ask pastor to, if I don't ask pastor, hey, God has been telling me this. I, I, I'm, I, I'm afraid of somebody making fun of me when I get behind the pulpit. I'm afraid of somebody not liking. We have too much criticizing going on in the churches today. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. People don't walk out of churches because God failed them. People walk out of churches because humanity fails them. And, and then humanity condemns them. And humanity judges them. And they get bubble wrap. And people get tired of having bubble wrap around them. And they wonder, when will the pain ever end? But what would happen... If a church would love somebody despite their past. What would happen if somebody loved somebody coming in despite what they've done? I'm not talking about rebellion and coming in. You're going to have to love me the way I am because this and that and this is the way. No, that's rebellion, honey. And God frowns on that. But somebody coming in saying, I'm just sick of the world. I'm willing to give my life to Jesus. I'm willing, amen, to forsake all that's, amen, attached to me. And I'm willing to put it under the blood of Jesus. I'm willing to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm wanting the Holy Ghost so I can have the power, amen, to become something that God always felt that God was going to use me greater. I always felt that God had something else for me, amen, but I don't fit the criteria I believe it's time come on Andrew you're going to be wrapped up a while we have people sitting on a Pentecostal pew they're afraid to do something for God for fear of getting their feelings hurt afraid of what others might say thinking that somebody else could do a better job afraid of getting asked a question that you don't know the answer to but Paul here in the scripture that I read he said I may have persecuted the church amen but God forgave me and it's under his blood and by the grace of God I am what I am and I, I'm here to remind somebody in this place when the enemy tries, amen, to tell you you are no good. You'll never amount to nothing. You get in the devil's face and you tell him by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. God's trying to wake us up. Amen. We're not here to be like one another. We're here to be like Jesus. We're not here to be molded after one another. But we're here to let God mold us. God made you perfect. He made you the way he intended you to be made. The devil tries his best to get you to look down on yourself. That you'll never accomplish a great work for God. And without realizing it, you, be, you start again to wrap yourself in bubble wrap. For fear of getting hurt.
And you begin to fear that somebody will reject you. That somebody will make fun of your worship. That a young person cannot have a walk with God and be cool. You don't have what it takes to be what God wants you to be. I want to say this, young people, side note. Getting in trouble is not maturity. I don't want to hear no people making fun of somebody that's listening to authority in this church. You ain't grown up until you're paying bills. And you have your own J-O-B. It's funny, well, uh, well uh, you know what, uh, if you really love me, you would do this. You know, if you really love me, you know what, the greatest person, uh, amen, that, uh, that showed his love for us was Jesus when he died on Calvary uh, and humanity was died. Amen, that's what true love is. Amen, that's what true love is. We live in a time where, uh, uh, where if, if, if a young person wants to be excited for God, they're made fun of. Uh, well, maybe, uh, well, maybe if they just were just got a little bit of swag in their step. No, I don't want none of my kids walking like a gangbanger. Got a little quiet. I don't want none of my kids running with thugs and thieves. I call the cops on thugs and thieves. I don't want to call the cops on my children. Hey Amen. We got to understand God is trying to mold. Hey Amen. And bring up these young people. And God is trying to, hey Amen, to do a work in this younger generation. But we have parents, Brother Asado, that, oh, they're their own person. I just got to be their friend. I just got to let them be happy. You'll never be happy burning in hell. But we have people not fitting the criteria. People that feel that they will never be used of God. And, they're, and, 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 and people, hey amen, they say, you know what? I'd rather do something out in the world because I'll get offended in the church. And I remember growing up in church. I couldn't wait for my grandfather to do to ask me to do something maybe it wasn't in front of the church but I, I, I love doing things for the, for, for the kingdom of God and people wanting to be used in church and now we live in a, a culture right now in church where you hey you want to sing in church oh no you want to test oh no why do you think that is it's not because they don't want to sing it's not because they don't have a testimony. It's not because they don't feel they can do anything for God because I know they do. It's because of the church. And I'm not talking about just this church. I'm talking about the church. That if you don't have a degree in music, you'll never belong in the music department. That if you don't have a Bible college degree, you'll never be on the platform preaching. That if you didn't go to this class or this seminar, or you didn't go to this Bible study, hey man, it don't matter how much you pray, it don't matter how much you read and study the Word of God, it don't matter how much you witness, it don't matter how many souls that you're winning, it don't matter, hey man, what God is doing in your life outside the church. Unless you're professional, you'll never be used in the church different right I don't believe apostolic lighthouse is this way I want to let, let y'all know we aren't this way. I'm preaching against, amen, professionalism that's trying to seep into the church. I'm preaching against having it my way or the highway. That's God's business right there. But what would happen and I picked Andrew because he's a worshiper. He don't worship God because I ask him to. When he stops worshiping and he hadn't ran the aisles in a while, I say, hey, buddy, what's wrong? But I never take him by the hand and sling him around the place. But what would happen if people were allowed
to worship God freely. See, see, his legs are still bound up. But what would happen if you just said, you know what? I don't care what anybody else thinks about me. I don't care what somebody else is going to say on the way home. I don't care other people's opinion and how I worship God. What would happen if the church began to lift their hands and realize that worship is not to get the approval of our brothers and sisters, but worship is to Jesus. We don't worship to get the praise of men. We worship to glorify God. What would happen to the church, Brother Asado, if that mindset, I don't care who's looking at me, I'm going to sing. If pastor asked me to sing, I'm going to sing. If pastor asked me to testify, I'm going to give it 100%. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to think about Jesus. Because something happens when you begin to praise and worship God. But we live in a society that gets offended by everything. Everything. Again, why does people leave churches? Not because God has failed them. The church failed them. Most of the time. Well, I'll say 50-50. The other half, they just fall out of love with God and they could just care less if they live for God or, and they just live their life. But what would happen if the church began to let people out of their bubble wrap and say, you know what, brother? I've been noticing, I've been noticing you've been been a little reserved lately and 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 you lay and and god laid me laid you on my heart and you know what brother god has something to do in your life brother if you just begin to worship god and magnify god if you worship god like nobody else is in the room amen and you god will begin to work through you in a way you'll begin to win souls in a way you thought you never could you'll pray through people in a parking lot amen you'll you'll see healings happen in walmart if you just learn to break out of the bubble wrap because there's something happens when somebody do a lap that young man right there my son not just because he's my son one day he got up and he felt the Holy Ghost so strong he got tired of having the bubble wrap around him he got tired of look at of having other people look at him and say this and that he said that when I come to church I'm gonna lift Jesus up I'm gonna praise him you can sit down buddy hey man he told me one night he told me he said daddy the faster I run the more I can feel Jesus and I said that'll preach because the faster you run to, towards Jesus the more you're going to feel him it's time to tell Satan, I am what I am by the grace of God. I may not be talented, but I got Jesus. I may not have what this world wants me to have, but I have Jesus. I believe it's time to get out of our comfort zone. I believe it's time for God to use you the way he intended. And I begin to think about bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is how they ship things. Through the mail. You get something in the mail. You get your little laptop, whatever, in the mail. You carry it around in the box all the time going. I got a laptop. I got the new Mac, MacBook Pro. Amen. With the sensor bar across it. One day, brother, I'm going to get one. No, you don't walk around with that thing wrapped in bubble wrap. You bust that dude and plug it in and you charge it up. You're just, at the, you're just chomping at the bits to open that computer and log in for the first time and put your, your name on it. So when it says, uh, welcome, Daryl. 
And it's the same way living for God. God did not fill you with the Holy Ghost for you to sit bubble wrapped on a Pentecostal pew and not be used of God and not be, amen, a vessel where God can use, amen, work through you. God never intended to showcase you. He intended you to be, amen, a soldier of the cross. Somebody that said, here I am, Lord. That when you're faced with adversity, I am what I am by the grace of God. You're not going to know every question when you get in. Amen. You're not going to know every answer to every question out on the field. You're not going to know, but I'm here to tell you. My Bible tells me, take no thought for in that hour. Amen. I will give you the words to speak. There's something about when you got Jesus. Now, if you ain't praying, don't expect God to show up. But God never saved you and sanctified you for you to sit bubble wrapped on a Pentecostal pew with your arms wrapped up where you can because you're afraid of getting hurt. Hey Amen. I'm trying to wake somebody up. Paul said in Romans 1.16 For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. He goes on in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 through 10 Therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not but have received Announce the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. He goes on to say, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of the power may be of God and not of us we are troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed I'm here to remind somebody yes when you step out of the bubble wrap you will fail you will at times stumble amen but we have to realize the power is not of us but it's of God you cannot hide what God has done for you you cannot hide the very gospel that saved you Stepping out of the bubble wrap is a scary place. But it is a realm where you learn to trust God more than ever. The bubble wrap will never show you your true and full potential. So when the enemy is telling you to step out for fear of persecution, dance your hardest Shout your loudest. Live for God with a greater intensity. Don't allow your flesh to get you back into the bubble wrap. When the enemy's telling you, you know what? You're going through hell on earth. You tell the devil, I'm going to dance right out of it. Hey man, I got you bound. I'm going to dance right out of it tonight. It's not time, hey man, to worry about what somebody else is saying, what you're going to do. Hey man, worry about what God's wanting to do through you. Dance your hardest. Shout your loudest. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. I 
I don't know how the anointing works and how it can take somebody that hasn't been learned and be able to utter some words that convicts the heart of an individual. I don't know how God does it, but all I know is I remember the words of a man that went through the eighth grade and stopped. And he would climb that pulpit every night and give his testimony and begin to preach the gospel every single night. A man with eighth grade education began to prick the heart of a young 12 year old boy and encourage him to make a decision that would forever change his life. I don't understand how the anointing works, Brother Sato. I, I, I don't. I can't even begin to understand what it's like to be in, under the anointing. But all I know is I wouldn't, couldn't do anything without Jesus. Our sufficient, sufficient, we're not sufficient of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. I want to slow it down here, not because I'm out of breath. But I want to close out this service tonight for somebody who's been sitting back or maybe you've just been waiting for the right time to do something for God. You've been waiting for, pa for pastor to come up to you and, and say, you know, it's your time to do this. And you know what? I believe that happens. But you know, when I heeded to the call of the ministry of my life, my pastor laughed in my face. And said, we'll see about that. Brother Jojo... You know how hard that was? I could have walked away from that. I head down. He told me no. I'll never be a preacher. I'll never do this. And I remember that drive home. And I knew what God had spoken to my wife. I want to ask my, my wife if she could come to the piano. I know what God had spoke to me. And I knew what had came over me when I was praying at the altar that day down at Bakersfield, California. I knew what God had told me. And I said, okay, God, everything that I've ever accomplished, man, has never helped me with. Stepping into pastoring, I didn't have an, organiz uh, an, an organization to back me on it at first. I didn't have that. Starting to preach, I didn't have the backing of my pastor. Everything that I've accomplished in life has been because God is the one that paved the way. That's why when the enemy comes and tries to tell me, you'll never amount to nothing. This is as far as you're ever going to get. I quote these words. I am what I am by the grace of God. I'm talking to somebody here tonight that maybe you've wrapped yourself in bubble wrap because you're afraid of what other people might say about you. You may not have the best voice. And you may not have the gift of gap. But it does not mean that what God has asked you to do, you can't do. We have so much sitting in our pews right now. I could look out at young people. Young people that refuse to sing for God, and, but they want to sing for the world. 
young, young girls that, that say, you know what? I want to go try out for American Idol. Get real. There's very few that make it in American Idol. Newsflash. Most of our gospel singers that go secular drop out of the uh, music because they cannot contend with the spirits that are out there. But here in 2 Corinthians, Paul says, For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. For now I forbear that lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord twice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Brother, th this ties into the message Brother Axtell preached Thursday night. Paul had something in, that, that bothered him that made him feel inferior to other people. You can hear it in his writings. If you read, Paul was not a man to boast of himself. Paul was filled with humility. He felt inferior to the other apostles because he persecuted the church. And Paul was wanting as many things removed out of his life so that he could feel better about himself and so that he could be what God wanted him to be. But God allowed one thing to stay in his life so that he would realize that without God, he could not do the ministry. I believe there's somebody here in this place that God has, has called you to do something and you're, and you're waiting for something to be cleared out in your life. There are some things that God will not clear out in your life so that you realize that is without God, you cannot do this. Sister kid, I do not step behind the pulpit unless I feel the anointing of God on my life. Because I know without the anointing, I will fail. I've tried to ask God to take that feeling away from me so that I can feel like I can move better in the spirit. And God reminded me, it is me who leads you. You go where I ask you. That dependency that you feel when you before you step behind the pulpit, you're always going to need that. That you're never ever going to be able to pastor or preach long enough where you don't need dependency on me. But we live in a time right now where if we send people to enough seminars, hey man, they can sing like an angel or preach like a conference preacher without ever putting a moment of prayer in. Sister Sato, I don't ever want to become one of those. I know this was a different message for a Sunday night, but I, I wonder if we could stand in this house and I want to open up this altar for somebody who's saying, God... And this is from the young to the old. I want to step out of the bubble wrap. I don't want to be worried about what people think about me. I don't want to be worried what people are, 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 are how, how they perceive me, the way that I do things. God, I'm going to come up here tonight and say, God, I'm going to heed to the calling of my life. God, I'm going to do what you've asked me to do a long time ago. And I'm going to let God, I'm going to let you, God, be the Lord in my life. And I'm going to allow you to lead me. I'm going to take off the bubble wrap. And I'm not going to wait for somebody else to start worshiping. 
I'm not going to wait for somebody else to start praying. But Lord, when church time starts, when prayer time is going at my house, I want to be, amen, the child that's in the, in the prayer circle the longest. I want to be the one that stays at the altar the longest. God, I want to step out of my bubble wrap. God, I want to embrace the identity that you want me to have.